Hello, Apple did another product release cycle, and sometimes that means a new charger is out. I can't really call this one a brick. It's tiny. In this case, there is a charger with some interesting marketing material. A 40 watt. No, 60 watt. No, 40 watt charger. But sometimes it's also 60 watts. If you have the literally two devices that can actually take advantage of the 60 watt mode, they may be able to charge your device a little faster. What's the point of this? Well, somewhat it's Apple being Apple. They couldn't possibly do this the way everyone else does. So the standard was modified to include a new protocol, DPS or dynamic power source. No one could have ever figured this out before. Anyway, as usual, the efficiency, performance, voltages, and temperatures of this charger will be checked out, and on top of that, I'll look into this DPS thing a little more and see if it's got a purpose. This one has one USB-C port to be compatible with all of your Apple-y devices. It's nice and compact, so comparing to some near competition to see if this is the new adapter to get, or if it's a neat concept and you can just keep your old charger. All of these parameters and more will be checked out throughout the video. It's going to get technical, so ask questions if you have them. There's an affiliate link which earns me a couple percent but costs you nothing in the description as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. So first off, here is the adapter. It's the usual glossy white Apple finish with a single USB-C port at a right angle to the power pins. It's professional looking and functional of course. In general, there are a few things I look for on a power adapter. The safety listing, of course, is a main feature. This is usually some other company's marking on the device. This mark is usually an indication that the device will fail more safely and generally won't cause harm to the user. This device has that, and it also has the six in a circle, which indicates a certain level of efficiency and idle power usage. The basic specifications are on screen. The efficiency is good. The idle is excellent, whether on 120 volts or 230 volts AC. It's going to do that job fine. The main thing here is this has that newer mode of operation only available to the newest devices. This charger is taking advantage of AVS or adjustable voltage supply. This is a really fancy name for almost the same thing as programmable power supply or PPS. It still varies the voltage of the supply. So if you plug this into an old adapter, it'll say 40 watt limit. If you plug this into a new hotness, it'll say a 60 watt limit. I'll go into more details of the performance later on. There's no surprises, so I'm not going to get too far into it. What does 60 watt max charging mean? Does maximum mean peak, like for a millisecond? Or is it continuously variable? Or short duration? Or does it mean you can do 60 watts for 10 minutes or an hour? In this case, it means it can increase the power level until either it or the device it's attached to can't do it anymore. This is accomplished using the latest technology in AVS, or adjustable voltage supply, meaning it can change the voltage of the output, yeah, like some other technology that already exists in the same standard. But here, the idea is that it can boost the power while staying in the same mode, so it can charge up to 60 watts without renegotiating. This will spend limited time at this power level because it overheats eventually. Checking this adapter with an old USB tester, the USB tester can't even see the new mode, even if it's running the latest software update. My other USB PD testers will also not show this mode. So effectively, if you plug this into an older device, it will strictly see it as a 40 watt USB power adapter, which is fine. This is what it is rated to do long term. But what if we want that maximum? So PowerZ did good here, and that they actually keep up with the latest adapters so the software update for the newer version of the tester supports detecting and enabling the AVS mode present in this charger. The voltage modes can be selected now. If you choose the AVS mode and do constant current on the load tester, it will lower the voltage of the supply without overheating and without renegotiating or shutting down. So dynamic power adjustment. It's not anything PPS can't do, but hopefully it's more reliable. The compatibility is basically with every device Apple makes. This is not a surprise. It is specifically not going to work with anything that wants PPS, as it doesn't have this mode, and every adapter that has PPS is not going to maximize speed with some Apple devices. This has always been the case. Why not just use the existing protocol of programmable power supply, or PPS, and make it compatible with all the existing USB chargers? Well, because they can, and you can't do anything about it. Isn't it easier to get the standard rewritten to suit your needs? AVS or adjustable voltage supply. Wait, isn't that the same thing as programmable power supply? No, 
they're entirely different protocol layers. One is in the EPR or extended power range, while PPS lies in the SPR or standard power range. But wait, now AVS can also be in the SPR range? If it's under 100 watts, they should be interchangeable, but they aren't. So there isn't backwards compatibility. Okay, why the new mode then? The main claim is that it's doing more monitoring. It isn't monitoring the device really, it just gets told what to do by the device, but the device can be like, I need less power. And the new thing is the adapter can also be like, I can't supply that much power. So without turning off the power level, it can be changed. This is inherent in power supplies and consumers anyway. It isn't like they force the number of watts into a device. The new operating mode is mostly related to temperature concerns on both ends, which is good. Cooler charging is more efficient charging, and it's always welcome. So that's my theory on why they did it, to manage temperatures better, which keeps the battery and the charger more healthy. I do have a new phone to test out this charger, so I'll give that a go over the next week or so to see if there are really any advantages or changes. The detailed data for this adapter shows that it meets the efficiency and idle power requirements, no problem. On 120 volts, you can see top efficiency around 92%. This is very good. The voltage and output ripple stay within acceptable ranges. Certainly not the lowest ripple adapter out there, but it is tiny. Flipping over to 230 volts AC and the peak efficiency stays at the same 92%. It shows some minor improvement in the 25% power level. That's great, again. So it's about the same really on two supplies, but there is a difference between the two. These adapters lack power factor correction, which is expected at this power level. These don't really try to hide it. The AC waveforms would ideally all look sinusoidal, the yellow line. The reality is pretty far from that. The peak current is impressive in a bad way. It essentially means the real efficiency of these devices is lower. You can actually see it starting to impact the wave shape on my very low impedance output AC power supply at the socket. This over even a 10 foot piece of wire is going to be worse. Forget about adding more devices on the same circuit. That's a topic for another day. In the thermal testing, this device had some interesting performance. I didn't include the 30 watt chart. It's fine at 40 watts. It claims continuous and it meets that claim. Things get interesting when you crank the watts up though. So at 60 watts, it got warm, but not what I would call hot. The device will shut off like a clock at 30 minutes. You can restart it though, so it doesn't look like it's thermal throttling here. I tried it again at 55 watts, and it allowed the adapter to get a lot more hot, but it did stay on this time. The reality is your devices aren't going to use 60 watts all the time. In terms of isolation, which is the thing that separates the danger side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side, this does excellent. The adapter is among the best in class for leakage from the AC side to the DC side. This is consistent across all of Apple's adapters. They use metal bodies on a lot of the products, so having low leakage current is important for the user feel of the device if it is plugged into a charger while trying to use it. This is that tingling feeling you get with certain chargers. The comparison device here is a much larger charger, but not bad on its own. But when you look at the Apple in comparison to it, you can see just how much lower the Apple numbers are. Okay, time to compare these chargers. I have so many chargers and I'm going to choose a range of chargers to compare these. Basically choosing some of the best options I've tested. Rather than picking just similar power levels, this is supposed to be the best, so why not compare it to the best? Apple generally does ship a better quality charger as included or added on with their products. They aren't doing anything different here. In terms of weight and size, this is a 60 watt class charger and it's tiny, and it's quite lightweight too. It's the opposite of the mega chargers. They must have spent some time optimizing the size and weight of this thing to get it into this package. I'm not going to tear it down here, but maybe in another video if there is enough interest. But you know it's going to be filled with glue, right? Anyway, yeah, comparing it to some other adapters, it is really right in line. The Google 45 watt adapter is about the same size and weight, but it's 45 watts, not 60 watts. It's also made to do PPS, not AVS. Ugh, they could have had both do both. 
It's interesting how much bigger and heavier chargers get as the power level goes up. The 140 watt Apple is still very impressive. In terms of value, I picked all high performance adapters, so the chart is a bit skewed to the higher end of the price scale. This does make the value look quite good for the Apple adapter. Keep in mind that there are tons of value options out there. The Bassius is a value option, but this is the non-sale price, but that's a different kind of device, and it's also very old at this point. They're gonna obsolete these things with software. But Apple is keeping the price point reasonable. Considering this can charge every Apple product with a USB-C capable charging port, it's a pretty good mid-power option. I'd use it on the go for sure, but for home, I use the 140 watt mostly, well, because I have it. When looking at the idle power graph for these, this is another area where Apple has been consistently better than the competition. The Google 45 watt is giving it a run for its money, but these are both excellent tier devices. So both are essentially negligible in terms of idle power usage. It's near on the same as leaving an extension cord plugged in. Really, very impressive how these perform. You can see how far these have come from looking at the Bassius 100 watt adapter on the chart. It's still good, but not good enough to keep up with the likes of these newer chargers. The average power consumption graph is covering a smaller range. These are all very high efficiency adapters, like I said. I picked the better adapters of the mix. The Apple adapter is on the bottom of the chart, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that in terms of efficiency, they are reaching the limits of what can really be done in an adapter like this, and it's impressive. As long as you don't look at that 45 watt Google adapter that did some voodoo witch magic or something. Almost 93% average efficiency. So Apple has some room for improvement. This could probably just be a full-time 60 watt adapter if the efficiency was that high. Hmm. Of course, Apple doesn't make this charger. Google doesn't make their adapter either. These are made by third-party OEMs, and with the size of these companies, they are often made by multiple third-party manufacturers. But either way, they did good. I have multiple OEMs from Apple and found consistency across years and manufacturers. Conclusion time. So, is this the ultimate single port USB travel adapter? It's all opinion. It meets all the specifications and requirements that can be asked of it. It can charge your laptop, it can charge your phone, it can charge all your USB-C devices, as long as they don't need PPS or anything other than USB PD. That's the limitation with this charger. It has a little less compatibility than some other chargers on the market because it chose to support the latest technology and not any older communication protocols. It's really nitpicking though. It's a good charger and it's ready for the future. I think using it in the home setting is not the greatest idea, especially if you're going to be using multiple of them. It is complicated to explain this and most people don't care. They just want a charger that works and some want it as fast as possible. For Apple phones, this is the one that will get that job done. I can see using this adapter as a travel companion since it's light and small. Maybe throw it in my cycling kit as an emergency charger since it can go fast. I use multi-port chargers around the house, yeah. I still use that old Satoshi 165 watt. The idle power is awful, but for me, it's always powering at least one laptop, so it's irrelevant. The efficiency is excellent, and it didn't break yet, so why replace it? And that's really the theme, and why Apple doesn't include a charger with the phone. So, which one? The Apple 20 watt charger you already have, or whatever is working. You don't need to get anything new. That one will work fine. That's not what I expected for a conclusion. Where's the rating out of 10? It's a keep the old one out of 10. It is advertised correctly and does the new one thing. USB DPS PD 3.2 AVS. It will potentially go faster for the iPhone Pro 17. So the Google 45 watt charger is better. It's cheaper and more efficient. And unless Apple software limited things, it shouldn't be more than a few minutes off the charging time. 45 watts into a 15 watt hour battery. Think about it. Let me know if you'll be upgrading to Apple's latest and greatest phone charger or sticking with the same old charger. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.